So can we track uh, more natural shapes and then a user defined one? Let's take a look at some uh, detection and tracking algorithms. So in this case, the idea is uh, proposed in this 2016 paper is to use the frames. So to use a Davis. Remember the Davis, it's a, it's a device uh, that has both an event-based sensor and a frame-based sensor on the same pixel array. Uh, so it produces events and frames, frames at somehow like uh, 25, 50 hertz. And the idea is instead of uh, pre writing uh, predefined shapes by the user, what we will do is we try to um, get them from, from the device, in this case, from the frame. And we know that events are caused by moving objects, uh, moving edges, actually. So what we are able to track or we will be seeking to track are uh, arbitrary edge patterns. Before what we were doing in some trackers, we were basically uh, specifying the user, the shape, which coincide with the contour of, of the objects. Right? Um, but in this case, we will take them from, from the data itself. So we will use the frames from a Davis to build extract, extract such a shape model as follows, right? This is the one of the grayscale frames from the Davis camera. And uh, what we do is first we do some classical uh, corner detection with like a Harris corner detector from 1988. And around these corners, uh, we also do some edge detection. So the, the canny edge detector and um, so the edges are represented by these white uh, points, pixels over, over black. Basically, the edge detection is, as its name says, is uh, detecting um, large intensity changes in, in space. Right? There is no concept of a motion here. This is just a static image. Uh, we are detecting derivatives uh, in the x and y direction. And whenever the derivative is larger than a threshold, then we are counting it as, as an edge. And then these black uh, uh, regions with red uh, pixels center at the green corner, this is kind of the, the pattern that we will be seeking to track. In this case, uh, the centroid of the of the patch, if we could call it, is it's red, and then the edge or the, the points uh, that represent some shape are these white pixels. And um, well, the idea is to use these edge uh, edge patterns to track because uh, around corners, because you know corners they don't suffer from the aperture problem. They they have two kind of distinctive edges, two or more distinctive directions, uh, well, in this case, directions, two or more edges that are distinctive enough that uh, we are able to track reliably. It would not be the same if we try to track just this uh, simple 1D edge. Okay, so that's the pattern that we want to track. Um, and now let's uh, compare the shape model and the events. Here represented the shape model are in, in red and the events actually from the event camera are in blue. And if we zoom in, we see that at the beginning, at the initialization, close to events, close to the frames. Uh, yeah, there is a good coincidence between the, the edge patterns that were extracted from the frames and the events triggered by the event uh, sensor within the camera. So it means that, uh, yeah, the events are kind of representing the what we knew intuitively that uh, um, we could take the, the edges from a natural image and try to track them using the events. A bit more in detail, if we zoom in to one of these uh, kind of regions, kind of uh, dispatches, then we see that how the method works. Well, it, there is a, a current event that arrives, and this is the state of the previous iteration. Imagine that that's it, that we are kind of the the model. It's here in red. Could be from the frame or from a previous iteration that were some events before. And how does this green event uh, 
affect the the shape model to kind of uh, say how the shape is moving so when we now the question is first this event to which of these red points in the shape model uh, corresponds to that's the first key ingredient right the data association and the second one is uh, once the association has been done how do you update it and for this we could choose um, like like before like a previous method we trade to the goal is to try to put the the model shape on top of the data shape and for that we are trying to minimize the euclidean distance between the two uh, point sets and this can be done using something called the iterative closest point algorithm uh, so it's not done being with one event at a time but with multiple events basically the result of this <clears throat> uh, tracking method is that the the red shape and the the model has moved has been aligned with the with the events <clears throat> and some events that do not agree well with the alignment are classified as as outliers so kind of noisy events and then they are discarded they do not influence on the alignment so that's basically it let's see some examples so this is a video with uh, star spinning this is just to show that <clears throat> even with uh, just a patch that contains two edges it's possible to track to design natural features and um, and be able to track them at very high speeds Um, yeah, so this is one example of a rotating start with accelerations uh, going from uh, from rest to 1,600 degrees per second, and uh, the displacements are you know, the velocities are quite high, so 1,800 pixels per second on the image plane, <clears throat> and we, this tracker is able to do it with mean error of uh, 6.3 degrees. Basically here on time, we see how the angular speed is steadily increasing. <clears throat> and here on the bottom plot, we see the orientation error. So the mean is in black and one standard deviation, it's this, the, the bands in blue. And what you see on the, on the left is basically the first frame where the features were detected. And then the tracks are, um, yeah, these color trajectories to distinguish from which corner it was originated. Okay, a bit more natural scene. Well, this is still a cartoonish scene, but it's uh, we have a translation back and forth, left and right, tracking 81 features with a mean error of 1.2 pixels, and that's what it's represented on this bottom plot. As time progresses, we plot the average error and uh, a band with a one standard deviation. In this case, the ground truth was obtained using the tracking on a frame-based algorithm. So the classical uh, KLT, Canada Lucas Tomasi tracker. Okay, so it was a cartoonish image, but can we track maybe something a bit more natural? Uh, okay, so then let's take a picture of some leaves and, uh, and wiggle, so move the uh, the camera back and forth and uh, detect, for example, 20 features and track them with an error of approximately 1.5 pixel uh, on the image plane. And that's you see the trajectories are being followed. So we are tracking them for about 1, 1. 1.6, seconds. So this is a way to basically to specify natural shapes right we are tracking some patterns that we don't have to user define these are some patterns that we will find naturally in the scene um, what are the advantages of this of this method well it works on events um, directly not uh, not on event frames um, so for efficiency this means that that was kind of represented with this icp with this point clouds right we are only processing events and comparing these two shape of events uh, these two point sets like was done in previous methods and basically if a pixel has no events we are not processing that pixel 
that's kind of very efficient. Um, it allows for high speed tracking, as we have seen with the, with the example of the star. It can track arbitrary edge patterns, natural scenes, as we have seen kind of this leaf example with some uh, uh, natural uh, patterns. And it can track for a yeah, considerable du duration, taking into account that these are events with microsecond resolution, it can track for a few seconds. What are the disadvantages? Um, well, there is jitter. Tracking is not as stable and accurate as with frames because the methods are not as well developed yet. And it's also partly due to the fact that we don't have absolute intensity. We only have edge information. We only know that there is an edge, but it, in natural images or in, in nat tracking in natural uh, with grayscale images is quite interesting to, to have absolute information because you could have uh, that one side is bright and the other one is dark and then you know every pixel uh, is contributing you know that if you have you are comparing a pixel a white pixel with another pixel from before and even though both regions are constant uh, one is kind of bright constant and the other one is dark constant then you know that there is a mismatch in this case that's not so much because uh, those regions, there are no events, and um, there is no way to distinguish them, right? because the events kind of it's the temporal information of the of the brightness, and it has thrown away this uh, constant. So the yes, this offset. Um, what are the other cons? Well, depending on the cost of the update per event, if it's very expensive or not, then it can be inefficient. Right? The alternative is that instead of processing one event, what you do is that you, you batch and you process the last 10 events, which is here done with iterative closest point. Iterative closest point doesn't work on a single event. It works on multiple point sets to try to align the point sets. And another disadvantage is that the initialization is based on frames, which if they are not properly exposed, uh, they are not HDR, um, and they may suffer from, from blur if you are trying to initialize while the camera is moving. Um, so ideally, we would like to initialize the trackers directly using events or using uh, reconstructed intensity images. Nice thing is that this type of you know, simple enough tracker with natural scene is allows to for visual odometry on such scenes. And that's what this video shows, right? We have a Davis camera showing here the input events, red and blue over the grayscale from the frames. And on the top right, you see the features tracked. And so the green dots are the centers. And then in magenta and cyan, you have the, the points. These are representing the, the two point sets. Let's go back a bit. So this is the input. These are the kind of the algorithm, uh, how it's working internally. And the output of the method is this blue trajectory. And it's being compared to the black trajectory from ground truth from a motion capture system. But still, it shows that it's able to, with these um, features on a natural scene, that the user didn't have to manually label. They were automatically. Uh, detected in frames and then tracked using events, it was able to um, estimate a trajectory of the camera. In this part of the video, what we see are the two point sets being aligned for different patterns, right? These are the, like a zoom in of these uh, you know, 20 by 20 pixels. Uh, each of these uh, squares or dots represents a pixel. And here you see like an edge pattern that is like a cross. This is a more complicated edge pattern and yeah, also a different one. They don't all need to be like two edges. It could be more complex. And um, there are the two point sets being aligned. Uh, the model point set, which is the purple one, is obtained from the frame. And the cyan one are basically the events. And here the events are just collected. We know that these events happen asynchronously, but we are collecting the last n events, I don't know, the last uh, 50 or 100 events in the in the patch. And you see how the, the algorithm is trying to align them. 
this is as as time progresses right this is not just one we see events come in and it's uh, an algorithm that it's good enough to provide uh, trajectories in in natural scenes such as this one yeah okay then the next question is um we have seen that one of the disadvantages of this method is that the the, the natural patterns to be tracked or shapes as we call them here are coming from the frames can we detect them from from the events 